In collaboration with BrainMind, we will now answer the question, what is cognitive aging? Cognitive aging is a paradigm where we understand that the brain ages over time. As we age in terms of our body, our brains age too. What does this mean exactly? Many people think that when they miss a word or a word is on the tip of their tongue, but they remember that later, could that be the earliest signs of a dementia, a syndrome like Alzheimer's disease? Well, actually, if a word is on the tip of your tongue, but you can remember it later, that may be a sign of age-related memory loss, or more accurately, age-related cognitive change. It's actually not a problem with your memory. It's a problem with processing speed, and it's a problem with, in some ways, attention. And these are some of the normal changes that can occur as we age. Let's take a step back a little bit and try to define a little bit more about cognitive aging. There are some things that, as we age, are totally normal. We may misplace our keys, but we can find them later. We may be very distracted, doing 10 things at once, answering a text message. The TV is on in the background. Your child is screaming. You're in a car. You're driving. You have 10 things going on. So someone may forget something, but it may not be a memory problem. It may actually be a problem with attention. When it comes to cognitive aging, there are two issues that come into play most commonly. First off, it's processing speed. In your brain, thoughts have to go from point A to point B. The brain is a complex mesh of signals, of cables, of wires that are communicating from one part to another at all times. When it comes to age-related changes, that communication signal from part A may take longer to get to part B. And thus, when you're trying to recall something, remember a person's name, remember an object's name, remember something, it's not actually a memory problem. Again, it just takes longer from that signal to go from point A to point B. And while we can say that cognitive aging may be the cause of these changes, I'm not exactly sure that that's the case. What I also think is that it could be a vascular change. As we age, things change in our bodies too. For example, blood pressure may go up. Cholesterol may change. Other things like Blood sugars may not be as well controlled as in the past. These types of vascular risk factors can impact brain function, can impact cognitive function, and also affect cognitive aging. In addition, when it comes to cognitive aging, it's not just that it takes longer to process something, but can also take longer to actually learn something new. So when someone is a young child, or even in high school and in college, that's when we're, our wheels are really moving quickly. The engine is firing on all cylinders. We're attuned. We're quick. But when we age, after the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, there's an incremental change in cognitive aging that most of us, if we test very subtly and very carefully, we can actually detect. But not everybody. So that's a good thing. When it comes to cognitive aging, I think it's important to remember something. It's longevity. We understand what longevity is, living longer, right? We understand what living better is, and that's something called, instead of lifespan, that's called health span. When someone lives longer, but they have a better quality of life and less medical complaints, that's not just longevity, lifespan, but it's also having a better health span. When it comes to cognitive aging specifically, there are things that anyone can do to reduce their likelihood of having these age-related cognitive change. To talk about it in a little more detail, there's a pathologic process, pathology, a disease process, that occurs when people have a construct or a diagnosis of dementia. Cognitive aging is not dementia. Cognitive aging is a non-pathological change in cognitive functions. Now, as we've talked about, there's a variety of different types of cognitive functions. There's higher order processing or executive function. There's speed of processing or attention. There's memory and there's learning. So as we go through these cognitive domains, we can understand that cognitive aging affects specific domains more so than others, specifically processing speed and also learning. Now, sometimes it can be hard to tease out, well, what is cognitive aging and what is the difference between dementia? 
What is the difference between early dementia, where someone is just having you know, mild glitches in, in memory, for example, could that be a worrisome sign of dementia to come, something like Alzheimer's disease, frontotemporal dementia, dementia with Lewy body, the list goes on and on. Or could it be something a little bit more benign, meaning it's not going to cause a dementia later, and that's this construct of normal cognitive aging. Now, in medical school, we were barely taught about cognitive aging. As we've learned more, we're now understanding more about the normal changes that happen in the brain. But is it really normal? And I worry about that term normal. Doctors still are using the term normal cognitive aging, but I, I like to take that normal term out. Is there things that we can do in our lifestyle? Are there medical conditions that can be more tightly controlled to ensure that our brain does not change as we age? I think we can. When it comes to cognitive aging, there are specific determining factors. Genetics, for example. You may have heard of longevity genes. One gene that gets a lot of attention is called clotho. Well, maybe clotho and maybe other longevity genes can play a role in healthy or optimal cognitive aging. There are also terms like resilience. Well, what does resilience mean? When someone has a high cognitive reserve or basically a high brain backup system, say that person's been exercising throughout their lifespan. They've eaten well, and we'll talk about what well means soon. But they've also learned a lot. They have a high cognitive reserve. They've gone to many years of education from college to graduate school and onward. They've continued in their career and lived an actively engaged cognitive life. Well, that basically, in colloquial terms, builds backup brain pathways. And when something starts to happen as we age, when there are these normal changes, it gives you a resilience or a resistance from the expected changes that can occur as we age. The other aspects about cognitive aging that we don't understand too much about just yet include environmental changes, exposures. We hear about head trauma. We hear about uh, environmental toxins. I think the jury is still out just a little bit about how these may implicate the changes that we occur when it comes to cognitive aging. But it's an exciting time. There are now organizations, research grants, and studies that are now specifically studying the impact of cognitive aging. Not just using interventions that include lifestyle changes, but also brain training. And in addition, there's a really exciting path of research using brain stimulation, using, for example, transcranial magnetic stimulation and something called TCDS, transcranial direct stimulation, where a current is actually waved above the brain in certain regions to stimulate and encourage brain pathways to not just fire more quickly, but fire more efficiently. So the future of cognitive aging is an exciting one. But the other important part about age-related cognitive change is that when we study people as we age and we try to understand the idiosyncrasies between dementia, what is normal versus abnormal, pathologic versus non-pathologic cognitive aging, it's important that future research tries to delineate the two differences so that when we study someone with dementia, we also track their cognitive function along two trajectories. First, dementia-related trajectories due to Alzheimer's pathology, for example, amyloid and tau, as it builds up in certain parts of the brain, it affects certain cognitive domains. However, with cognitive aging, it's different. That pathology is different. It's not a specific pathology. It's a little bit more vague. We don't exactly have the biomarkers yet. It's ultra-structural. We can't see it, but we can detect it when we do very specific, highly detailed cognitive testing. And it's extremely important that as we implement pharmacologic, meaning drugs, vitamins, supplements, and non-pharmacologic, meaning lifestyle approaches, we really try to study in detail the differences in the impact of these changes, of these interventions on both cognitive aging as well as pathological cognitive decline.